Baltimore is known for the Ravens, the Orioles, Blue Crabs, and murder. It is perpetually listed among America's most violent cities. About every 40 hours, someone else is struck down. Someone just got shot outside. Most often by gunfire. The city's brutal legacy has been immortalized in TV shows such as HBO's The Wire, where gritty fictional killings are not terribly far from the reality on the streets. What keeps us up at night is that this violence blows up innocent people. So it might surprise you to hear Police Commissioner Frederick Bielfeld make a proud confession. His department is arresting fewer people than ever before. Listen, conventional police strategy says, if you want to affect that, arrest more people. Just bring in more of these guys and you'll drive the number down. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work that way. So what does work? All right, we're going to go to 2410. This. Down, an early morning raid on a known violent criminal suspected of once again having illegal guns. This is going to be a uh, 9 millimeter. It is part of an ambitious and tough program called Exile which focuses police and prosecutors on making quality, not quantity arrests, on nabbing serious, dangerous offenders, even if that means letting lower-level drug dealers and thieves slip away. In other words, less is more. So you're saying that that mass arrest for all of these different small petty crimes was what? It didn't affect our bottom line. Can't solve world hunger. We, we, we've been battling drugs in America for decades now, but I can get rid of these guys with guns. We can. Exile depends on a number of key strategies. First, identifying and tracking violent felons. The police have mapped every square block, noting which felons live where, and they relentlessly follow their movements, monitor their friendships, watch everything they do. We're mapping them. We're mapping uh, gun offenders and violent offenders. If it sounds like an infringement on privacy, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake says, so be it. People uh, have a right to know where these individuals are and the police need to know where these violent individuals are because they are tasked with keeping our neighborhoods safe. So you're saying privacy issues should not be even part of this discussion? Not saying that at all. I think the community um, weighs in on the side of wanting safety. And, and weighs that more than an offender's right to privacy. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm yourself. doing great. Great That's to good. see you. Hi, how are you, ma'am? Good to you? see you. Second, Exile relies on communities for information about bad guys. The police know it is controversial to sometimes let lower-level criminals elude them, but that more lenient attitude sometimes gets people who have been associated with petty crimes talking in a community where snitching is frowned on. They don't want you to fish with a net. They want my cops to come through this block with a spear. And when they see a shark on the street, to be able to know the, and discern the difference and jam the spear right through the top of the shark's head. That's what they want you to be able to do. And the spear? Federal law enforcement clout. Exile relies on an unusually high level of cooperation between local, state, and federal police agencies. For example, several Baltimore street cops have been deputized by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, allowing them access to computerized gun tracing files. What's more, the feds are quick to step in if the locals say their state laws can't bring enough pressure to bear on the accused. Our sentences are without probation and without parole, and so when we prosecute offenders uh, in federal court, they know that if they get a sentence of 10 years, they're actually going to serve uh, a large portion of that 10 years, with the exception of potential time off for good behavior. The result? Last year, 2010, the lowest homicide rate in Baltimore in 25 years. While police have the momentum in this cat and mouse game with violent criminals, the overall score is still grim. Even as their murder numbers drop, Baltimore remains one of the five most violent cities in the country. When we set a 25-year low for homicides. We didn't pop champagne cork and, and uh, celebrate and tink our glasses together. What we did was we woke up the next morning and started work all over again. Officials know they have many years of hard work ahead, but they also know this. For the first time in almost anyone's memory, the police have the killers on the run.